Hello and welcome to Chapter 5 of Intro to Psychology. In this video, I'll be discussing the difference between sensation and perception. I'm going to begin by showing you a series of optical illusions. Take a look at this photo. What do you see? If you're like most people, you probably see a young woman looking away kind of in this direction. Uh, so if you see the young woman, you might say that this is her eyelash, this is her nose, this is her jaw, uh, this is her ear, and this is her hair. She's wearing something over her hair. Uh, this is her neck, and she might be wearing a necklace and might be wearing a kind of fur coat. But you may also see an older woman who's looking uh, just to the left. Uh, so for the older woman, here's her eye, here's her nose, here's her mouth instead of a necklace, this is her chin, and her uh, what she's wearing over her hair is kind of obstructing her face, and she's also wearing a kind of fur coat. So this is a pretty common optical illusion in which two images are superimposed on each other. How about this photo? Which animal do you see? So there are two animals in this photo. Uh, one is a duck with a beak that goes over here, uh, the eye and, uh, and uh, the back of the duck's head is here and its neck is kind of there. And then there's also a rabbit with the rabbit's nose area is right here, the eye, same thing. And then uh, the ears of the rabbit, instead of being pointed up, are kind of pointed back. Uh, so the rabbit is looking this way and the duck is looking this way. Uh, so uh, in this image, uh, once again, two animals are kind of superimposed on each other. If you had seen, uh, you know, a bunch of pictures of rabbits, you might have seen a rabbit more quickly than you've seen a duck. Or if you had seen uh, several pictures of ducks, you might have seen a duck more quickly uh, than you would the rabbit. How about this picture? Who's sitting in the chair, a man or a woman? Now this image is pulled from social media and it's kind of taken from an awkward angle. When you first look at it, uh, I kind of see that this is one person and this is another person. Uh, but in reality, it's, uh, it's actually the opposite. Uh, the, uh, the person in the pink shirt is actually the man and he's sitting down in the chair and the person with the long hair uh, is actually uh, the person who's standing up uh, wearing heels. Uh, so this one's an interesting one taken from an awkward angle. How about this one? Which square is darker, A or B? Now, if you're like most people, you'll probably say that A is darker than B. Uh, but I'll show, as you may guess by now, that's not actually the case. On the next slide, there's a little bridge that's placed between A and B, and you see that they're actually the same color. How is that? Well, this is a unique example of how our brain uh, kind of tricks us using knowledge that we already have about our visual field. Uh, so in this case, it's that we have knowledge about how shadows work. Shadows make things look darker than they actually are in the real world. So when we see A, which looks pretty dark, and we see B, and we also see that B has a shadow cast over it by this green sphere, our brains tell us that, okay, B is actually lighter than A, it just has a shadow cast over it. Uh, so the answer kind of influences us and tricks our minds into thinking that B is lighter uh, than A, uh, when in reality, they are actually the same color. Take a look at this one. Which line is longer? And just look at the black lines, not the blue lines. Which line is longer, A or B? If you're like most people, you'll probably say that B is longer than A, and we'll come back to that. Take a look at this one. Once again, just looking at the black lines. Which line is longer, C or D? Once again, if you're like most people, you'll probably say that D is longer. As you can guess by now, that's not actually the case. On this slide, I've put some red lines that are parallel uh, to show that the black lines in both of these cases are exactly the same length. This is known as the mueller liar illusion, uh, in which lines appear to be different lengths even though they're actually identical. Over here, uh, the arrows at the end of the lines, these kind of blue arrows, uh, make the line on the right look longer than the one on the left, even though they're actually the same length. Our 
minds are tricking us uh, using the context, the, the contextual information around uh, the black lines to make us think uh, that, the, uh, that B is longer than A. Uh, and then you can also see it applied to a three-dimensional image. Uh, so here, uh, because of our knowledge of about how rooms work and, and, and our depth perception, uh, we assume that D is longer than C uh, when that's not actually the case. In another example, uh, take a look at this door frame right here. So this side of the door frame here, uh, in real life, we know that that's going to be the same length uh, of, of the door frame on the other side. Right. If and our, what our brains are telling us is that if we are, we're just looking at it from a weird angle. If we were to position ourselves right in front of the right in front of the door, those two would be the same length. Same thing with this window. We presume that this side of the window is the same length of this side of the window. So then, when we see a line that's further away, according to our depth perception, we assume that this line is longer when it's not actually uh, the case. So these. Optical illusions provide us with great examples of how sensation and perception are not the same. When I say sensation, I'm referring to the physiological processes uh, that, uh, uh, that our senses use to take in information from the world. Whereas when I say perception, I'm talking about the psychological processes, the ways in which we interpret information and organize information and consciously experience information. Uh, two other terms that are important to know uh, for the discussion, this discussion on sensation and perception are stimuli or a stimulus uh, and transduction. Uh, so stimulus is any object or event that can elicit a sensory or behavioral response in an organism, and transduction is the conversion of energy from one form into another. So in this example down here, uh, when you see a butterfly, uh, certain light waves uh, enter your eye and so the butterfly is the stimulus and uh, the light waves enter your eye and are converted into neural signals uh, through a process of transduction that we'll describe in more detail in the next video. So typically when we talk about sensation, we uh, often refer to the five senses, sight, hearing, smell, taste, and touch. In reality, there are many more than just five senses. There's many other things that our body does to provide us with sensory information about the world around us. Uh, things such as balance, uh, where we are or how we're coordinated. Uh, things such as uh, noise perception, our sense of pain, uh, or thermoception, our sense of temperature. Uh, those are all uh, additional senses that our body has. So if anyone ever tells you that you have more than five senses, uh, it's not some kind of mutant or some kind of uh, superhero power. Uh, these are other senses outside of the regular five that we talk about. So for the sake of this discussion on sensation and perception, uh, we're going to be focusing on the sense of sight, uh, on our visual system and how our eyes uh, help us understand the world. Um, and when we talk about perception, particularly when it comes to visual perception, uh, there are two forms of processing, two ways in which uh, our perceptual abilities uh, are shaped. Uh, one is bottom-up processing, when our perceptions are built directly from sensory experiences. And the second is top-down processing, when perceptions are built from prior knowledge uh, and experiences. Uh, so you'll be discussing bottom-up processing and top-down processing in lab uh, in greater detail. Uh, but to give a short summary, uh, bottom-up processing only involves uh, physiological or just sensory information. So uh, just perceiving uh, uh, a, a door or just perceiving a line, uh, whereas top-down processing uh, gives us information from our prior knowledge and experiences, things like depth perception, things like, um, you know, if you had seen a series of, of rabbits, you would probably see that rabbit first rather than the, than the duck. So there are several factors that influence how we perceive the world. Um, the first one is sensory adaptation. Uh, it's often true that you don't perceive a stimulus uh, when it's held constant over time. So for example, uh, if you've ever been a in a classroom that has uh, you know, a light that's flickering or that has a clock in it that's ticking, uh, at first when you enter the room and it's quiet, you'll notice the ticking clock. Uh, but after a while of an hour long lecture, uh, you probably won't hear that ticking clock or notice it as much because it's held constant over time. Uh, our senses are drawn towards new stimuli and not the ones that are held constant. Uh, 
Another factor uh, that influences perception is inattentional blindness. You'll see some examples of this uh, in lab. Uh, so inattentional blindness is the failure to notice something that is completely visible uh, because of a lack of attention or because your attention is being misdirected. Uh, so for example, in this figure right here, uh, they did a study uh, where they asked people to focus on the black and white figures. Uh, and uh, in this study, uh, nearly one third of the participants did not notice that a red cross passed across the screen uh, because they simply were not told to focus on it. But even though it was readily available and they could see it and it was colored, uh, they didn't even register that it was there because of how their, their attention was directed. I'm gonna leave a link on our Canvas page uh, to this video on YouTube. Uh, uh, that's another example of inattentional blindness. I'd like you to try to figure out who committed the murder in this situation. Two other factors that influence perception are motivation as well as culture and we already mentioned prior experiences. Uh, with motivation, sometimes uh, our, our uh, our internal states or our expectations or what we're looking for shapes how we see the world around us. So for example, sometimes you might think you hear a phone ringing when it's not because you might be uh, waiting for an, uh, an important phone call. And you might've had that experience where, where you're just in your room and you, and you ask, oh, is the phone ringing? Is the phone ringing? Because you want it to ring and that shapes your perception of what's actually there. There's no sensations going to your ears, uh, but you feel like there are because of your motivation. Uh, then there's also culture. Uh, so, um, for example, with the Mueller uh, liar illusion, uh, one study found that people from Western cultures where architecture more commonly follows straight lines are more likely to be de deceived by the illusion than individuals uh, from non-Western cultures where architecture is more frequently rounded. Uh, in that study, uh, they used uh, individuals uh, from the Zulu culture in si South Africa, uh, where uh, architecture is often arranged in circles, and they were much less susceptible uh, to that illusion. Here's another uh, example of uh, how our uh, expectations and, and prior experiences uh, shape our perception. Uh, this is an example of uh, Gestalt psychology, in which uh, if you look at this over here, most people would say that this is a circle. In reality, it's just a collection of lines, but our brains automatically uh, put those lines together to form a circle uh, without even letting us being consciously aware of it. Same thing, if I were to ask you what this is over here, you wouldn't say a collection of lines, you'd most likely say this is a rectangle. And so in the next video, we'll discuss a little bit more about sensation and perception as it applies uh, to the visual system. I'll also leave some links on our Canvas page uh, explaining these two uh, really interesting uh, viral examples of sensation and perception, uh, the Laurel and Yanni, de uh, uh, Yanni debate, uh, as well as the infamous address uh, that was floating around social media.